all righty. So I'm pretty sure many of you have been conversant with what Hollywood has been doing over the past couple of years, prioritizing identity politics over entertainment, escapism, and even historical facts, all in the name of pushing diversity, equity, and inclusion in their movies, giving rise to many identity politics being pushed in so many movies, even though those movies do not require diversity given the places that they were set in and the time that they were set in. Now, this push for diversity all started when woke revolutionaries criticized the Oscars for being so white. Hence, hashtag Oscar so white was trending a couple of years ago. Now, however, this push for diversity is only applied, I might say, when it comes to a particular race and many Hollywood studios have had aired to these rules in the bids to be able to win awards. However, there are some studios out there who are not necessarily adhering to these rules because they are prioritizing historical facts in their movies rather than pushing identity politics, which may make them not qualify for certain Hollywood awards or the awards that are happening at the Oscars and the likes of them. One example of the movies would be The Promised Land that actually features Mads Mikkelsen. Now, if you don't know who Mads Mikkelsen is, you probably might have seen him as a bad guy in the Doctor Strange movie, the very first part. Not the Doctor Strange multiverse of nonsense or Doctor Strange mom, as some of my other YouTube cohorts would call him, but the first original, the good Doctor Strange movie. In any case, you might have also seen him at the Fantastic Beast movie, the part three, which I am yet to see for some reason. But the guy, to me, generally is a great actor. He's pretty, pretty good with what he does. And he posed a frustrated figure recently when he was being asked at a film festival in Venice by a reporter about how his movie may not qualify for this Hollywood Awards for Best Picture and whatnot because of its lack of diversity, which has led to many headlines such as this one. Mads Mikkelsen slams reporter over diversity question at Venice Film Festival premiere. Now, I do have a clip of that particular exchange between Matt Mikkelsen, the director of the movie, as well as the reporter's question that I want us to go over because I sincerely believe that this particular clip exposes the hypocrisy of Hollywood and how they are normalizing racism towards a particular race. Now, as I play this clip, I'm going to share my opinion as I go along. Please feel free to share your opinion in the comment section below. And if you're yet to do so, please do consider smashing the like button on the video because it is massively helpful to the YouTube algorithms and it is also appreciated by me. Thank you very much, Lee. Now, without further ado, here we go. All right, before we get into it, I'd like to say the audio isn't too loud, so you might need to pay close, closer attention. Um, I've really tried to look for a loud audio, but I couldn't find any, but this is the best that I got. So let's just jump right into it, and I'm going to share my opinion, as I've said before. Um, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Hello, uh, I'm from Denmark, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So you're a little bit into it. Uh, this is a cast and a Danish production, which is entirely Nordic. It uh, therefore has some lack of diversity, you would say, as also new rules are implied in what? Hollywood. What? Are you on to? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't blame him. I've He's so perplexed right now. Like, what are you talking about when you're talking about diversity? Because this is the concern of Hollywood. Hollywood is so much focused on diversity by race. But people like this, I'm pretty sure, are people like me who are more focused on diversity of thoughts. Because I believe that we are diversified by reason of thoughts. People who are white, black, Hispanic can have the same thing in common, even closer than people who are just black or people who are just white. Pretty much like you would have something more in common with your friends than your own biological family. That's the way that the world is. However, Hollywood doesn't want us to see the world this way. Hollywood wants us to see the world through the lens of race and through the lens of race only. Uh, sorry, but from the get-go, uh, <laughs> from the get-go, there is set some rules of diversity in uh, across the Atlantic uh, for competing in the best picture, the equivalent to the. Let me quickly pull out that rule in case you don't know what he's talking about. I have it right here. A couple of years ago, like I said, because Hollywood was attacked for being so white, Oscars were attacked for being so white, they put out this rule. They said, for any movie that will be qualifying for some kind of an award, maybe Best Picture or whatnot, these are the rules. They said at least one lead character in the movie must be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group, which means minus white. Um, at least 30% of the general assembled cast must be from at least two underrepresented groups, which means minus white. 
white women racial ethnic lgbtq plus or people with disabilities or the movies subject must concern one of those groups so if your movie is predominantly a white cast you don't qualify for this however if your movie is predominantly maybe asian cast african cast arab cast hispanic cast you will qualify for this because if you're white and you have 30 percent women or more you still need another 30 percent of ethnic people to be there which would mean that the movie is not predominantly white now when it comes to historical movies you need it to be authentic it has to be accordingly if it is set in somewhere in europe in the 1700s for goodness sake because generally most of europe in the 1700s was predominantly white so it doesn't make any sense making some queen or queen or something from there if you want it to be authentic making them black hispanic for the sake of showing you know a reflection of what the world is today which is what hollywood always uses as i as an excuse when they are you know pushing this said identity politics agenda in their movies this competition as i see it you don't live up to these standards with this broadcast um, and there is just uh, curious it's not because of artistic reasons it's because of lack of diversity that this can't compete in that competition it's so essentially what this guy is actually trying to say uh, although a lot of people are saying oh Mads Mikkelsen roast journalists asking why 1750s Danish film doesn't have more diversity that's not what the guy was doing the, 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 the journalist wasn't being woke I think the journalist was actually calling out Hollywood on its hypocrisy that this movie might merit an award but because it doesn't meet with their said diversity rules pushing diversity and um, identity politics in their movies that it will not qualify taking away meritocracy from their award now now, this how does it affect people who are non-white how does it affect them because i believe that these whole rules affirmative action ideas that these people are implementing in hollywood and the oscars is actually just like affirmative action and it negatively affects people i'll give you a typical example i saw childish gambino said he featured in the movie one time with tina fey and tina fey literally told him that oh you are a diversity hire that's why they actually gave you this job for this movie which meant in tina fey's eyes that he did not qualify to play a role in that movie even though Charles Gambino I think is a pretty good actor I think he's, he's a great actor in my own opinion I mean he really is impressive in the movies that I've seen him in or series that I've seen him in um, but you know him being told that takes away the actual merit it's almost like when the designer of Black Panther won an award and they said oh the first black woman to win for fashion designing at the Oscars it takes away the actual merit because we don't know whether they gave her the award because she merited the the award or whether they gave it to her simply because she was black which is the problem with identity politics in movies you take away meritocracy because you want to fulfill all diversity equity and inclusion righteousness or whatnot so um it is negatively effective on black people and you know ethnic people in general people who are non-white because now we don't know whether they merit what they get or whether it's simply because they are trying to fulfill all righteousness in the agenda of identity politics. Are you? I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm serious uh, about this because I'm, I'm, you're, you're, you're putting I'm, us on the spot, so, so yeah, you sure, answer the yeah, question. No, because I have in comparison, Parasite, which is great. What, what do you think? But I would think that Paris Mads Mikkelsen, this guy is actually speaking for you. He's not actually speaking against you. He's actually speaking for you. So I think that Mads Mikkelsen is actually mistaken on what the um, reporter is actually trying to say. He thinks that the reporter is trying to attack him for not being diverse enough. But the reporter is actually calling out the hypocrisy of Hollywood, uh, putting out a systemically racist rule against white people, saying that if a movie is generally, you know, dominated by predominantly white cast, that it wouldn't qualify for an award what to me is systemically racist against white people in my opinion exposing the hypocrisy of hollywood um as you know push for against racism and whatnot or against systemic racism Parasite, which is a great movie coming from south korea mm. had the same level of diversity but coming from south korea now the movie is talking about parasite from south korea is predominantly south koreans right however this movie won about four awards in 2020 i think um at the oscars four awards including best picture best director and best whatever else they gave that movie but that movie was predominantly korean which in the context of diversity means that it's not diverse however because of that rule that i read to you it qualifies in Hollywood for diversity but how would that movie qualify for diversity whereas a movie like his movie The Promised Land that's coming out on October the 5th will not qualify simply because it's predominantly white 
so that's what the um, journalist is saying he's not actually accusing them of not being diverse he's actually in hollywood of hollywood's hypocrisy this was actually still eligible for the competition you as a danish movie with an all nordic cast is not and that's what i think is a little bit conundrum here I don't understand the question. Okay. Well, first of all, the f film <laughs> takes place in Denmark in the 1750s. Yeah. We ha we do have a, um, a a big plot line, you know, about. So any, in any case, he goes on to explain that they do have a plot line that there is a black woman who actually experienced racism in the movie. But generally, um, because it takes place in 1750 Denmark, it's generally predominantly white. Now, today, if you go and look at the population of Denmark, you find out that it is 86% Denmark people who are predominantly white. It also consists of Germans, Iranians, and other Caucasian people across Europe, Turkish people and whatnot. However, the diversity groups like your Asians in Denmark are less than 1%. Put together with the blacks and the hispanics in denmark so if you go back to 1750 where travels haven't even been that much denmark would be predominantly nearly 100 percent white people so if you want to set a movie in that time and you want it to be authentic you have to make it predominantly white but automatically that now makes it not eligible for award in hollywood isn't that anti-white racism you let me know in the comment section below but i want to say kudos to people like Mads mikkelsen for featuring in an independent movie like this because this is actually the way to go if you want to be authentic and i exactly one question that i want to ask hollywood how is the diversity equity and inclusion and identity politics in our movie actually going for you because hollywood is failing many of these studios that are adhering to this are failing at the box office massively because the reality is that what they think in their world doesn't really translate into the real world the real world is waking up we are finding out more and more that we have more in common not by reason of race but by reason of thoughts and experiences that we are experiencing experiencing similar things as a people as human beings not as one race to another so good on my michael sin for actually featuring in this and it will be interesting to see how hollywood continues to push the diversity and equity and inclusion if you guys take notice people they're becoming more and more irrelevant the more that they are pushing this thing a lot of people used to watch the oscars i mean oscars used to get you know 50 million people watching it uh, overnight when it's actually airing however the last few ones they've been barely able to scratch 18 million and the emmys couldn't even scratch 10 million the golden globes couldn't even scratch 10 million people watching them nobody cares about these things anymore because they have destroyed it because they have forgone escapism they have forgone authenticity in historical accuracy hence why you are getting documentaries like you know cleopatra and the likes of them and kudos to matt mickelson for actually you know featuring in a movie that prioritizes authenticity historical accuracy escapism and probably even maybe entertain us as well rather than identity politics.